So, Duncan, could I ask you to reply to um, question one from Gareth Epps regarding accreditation? Yes, I mean, I think really our response from, from the FFAC is, is, is quite clear um, that the 2011 conference resolution didn't ask the FFAC committee to take action, um, and we became involved only in the late spring of this year at the request of the conference committee. Gareth, would you like to ask a supplementary to that? Um, I don't think that really answers the, chair, um, uh, the question, Chair, because the resolution um, last year condemned the system of, of police accreditation that, that was used, and FS, FFAC have turned around and, and, and so, it, so it appears, ignored that. As two specific follow-ups. Follow Firstly, FFAC and the party was given clear insurance advice that contradicts the reasons given, given in the report that this was done for insurance reasons. Secondly, there has been concerns, which um, were discussed by Tim in the, in, in the last item, item of business, that the, the accreditation system affected the rights of particular mem members of this party to participate in this conference, which is a democratic decision-making body of the party. What consideration did FFAC give to mitigating that? Duncan, can you respond, please? Well, as, as to the second, uh, I, I think I'd refer you to the answer that the party president gave to your very similar question to him, which is that a very, very detailed set of procedures was, was set out to address the very real, very legitimate concerns of a very small number of people who, who, who had identity issues. Um, as, as to the, the first aspect of your question, the decision that the FFAC took was that in view of the financial risk, we were not told that we would not get insurance, but what was extremely apparent was that in the event of, and extremely unlikely, but in the event of an, uh, an incident, that the insurance company would vigorously resist paying on the basis, in part, of us having ignored very specific home office and police advice. The issue was the financial risk, which we felt was not appropriate to make. And I would remind you that this was made by a committee, including the party president, the chair of the parliamentary party, the vice leader of the party, and the chair of the English party, and that it was a decision which was taken out of very careful consideration by a group of, I think it was 15 people, with one dissenting vote. That was reported in great detail to the federal executive at their meeting of, as I recall, the 21st of May, and the federal executive endorsed the decision taken by their subcommittee. Thank you, Duncan. Um, can you now reply to question two from Zoe O'Connell regarding interns, please? Yes, we, uh, we simply... Sorry, not in, sorry uh, regarding um, accreditation again, sorry. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the question asks, why did we ignore the wishes of the FCC? We simply did not ignore the wishes of the FCC. We were asked, somewhat to our surprise, to make a decision that the FCC had felt it was unable to make. We did that rather reluctantly. Um, and, and as I said in answer to the first question, it was with one dissenting vote, the unanimous, if reluctant, decision of the committee reported back to the federal executive which then endorsed it. Uh, Zoe, would you like to ask a supplementary question? You, um, there appears to have been a lot of confusion um, over what's happened with accreditation. Um, at least one FCC member I've spoken to was initially under the impression that what you recounted just then, um, the referral to FFAC, was not to be a final decision. Would FFAC be able to publish something indicating um, exactly what was referred to it for decision and what the expected next steps were? Was this, was this documented in any way or, uh, or not? So I'm not sure, I'm genuinely not sure if I've quite understood that. 
Um, when I have spoken to certain people, they were under the impression that it was referred to FFAC for, um, for review and not for a final decision. I do not know the accuracy of that information, but much of the accreditation debate has been characterised by, by confusion over who said what, who approved what with the opt-out process. I was wondering if there was actually anything minuted or documented about what was referred to FFAC for decision in the first place. Again, I, I, I don't have those notes with me, but my very clear recollection is that I was asked by the chair of the Federal Conference Committee on behalf of his committee to make a decision on the matter, and that certainly was the basis on which it was proposed to the FFAC. And, and the summary, I think, of the FFAC discuss, discussion certainly is, is, is a matter of, of sort of public record, and we're very happy to, um, you know, to, to, to share that with the membership if, if, if that's the wish of conference. As I said, I have received a request to reject the section of the report relating to accreditation at Federal Conference, which is on page 18 of the report. So, um, will Duncan please stand by to respond, and I now call Gareth Epps to move the rejection. Thank you, John. Thank you, Conference. I'm speaking on behalf of a load of friends of mine who aren't here because of the accreditation policy. Conference in March, we held a federal conference amid high controversy in the, at the height of the dispute over the NHS bill in Gateshead, without accreditation, with no problem at all. The only reason we have it here, of course, is that the Home Office has got a sort of standing budget that pays for it. In April, FCC said it didn't think the case for accreditation was in any way proved. I think it said it hadn't been persuaded. I provided, and I'm sure others did too, professional advice on insurance that demonstrated that accreditation was not necessary and the risks that have been described by Duncan uh, didn't exist because the insurance risk in the event of certain things happening would fall, uh, fall in those circumstances on the police and not the party. But most importantly, conference, last year we passed a motion that condemned the accreditation system. So FFAC had a conference vote, had some, had some evidence to, um, to implement that conference vote and decided to ignore it. Now, we don't directly elect FFAC, perhaps we should, so we can't vote individual people out. But we can vote to tell our party bodies not to stick two fingers up to the will of conference, and we can also vote to tell the authorities to pull their necks back and change the system of accreditation so that our members can, are able to once again to take part in the democratic decision-making processes of this party. I urge you to support the request to reject this section of the report so that we can approve the rest of it. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Um, can I now call Duncan Greenland to respond on behalf of FFAC? Yeah, I, I mean, I fear I'm, I'm, I'm at risk of, of, of repeating more or less what I said before. Um, you know, it was a very difficult decision to be made. We made it on the base. We made it, as I say, with one dissenting vo vote. The people on the committee are a mixture of people who are elected directly by the federal executive and the people who are there by virtue of, of, of their significant other roles within the party. And the decision made, difficult though it was, was endorsed then by the federal executive, which all party, sorry, all conference delegates elect as, if you like, the decision-making body on their behalf. It was a difficult decision it was made in view of what we felt, and you, you may disagree with the judgment, but we felt because of the very significant financial risk. That was our decision, um, and I would ask conference to support that decision um, and to vote in favour of the report, including that section. Thank you. Thank you, Duncan. Uh, we now move to a series of two votes. Um, firstly, can I see those voting to reject the section of the FFA, FFAC report relating to conference accreditation? 
And can I see those voting to retain that section? That is clearly retained. We now move to a vote on the report as a whole. Um, can I see those voting to approve the report? And can I see those voting to reject the report? Uh, that is very clearly uh, approved. 